All right, today we're taking a look at a collision problem in which we have a 100 gram arrow traveling horizontally at 30 meters per second when it strikes a 200 gram apple, which is initially at rest on top of a 1.5 meter tall fence post. Now when the arrow strikes the apple, it's gonna become embedded in the apple and the two objects are gonna to fall together to the ground. And today we're gonna to calculate the horizontal distance between the fence post and the position where the apple and the arrow land down here on the level ground. Now this problem can be broken up into two different phases. The first phase of this problem is centered around the collision between this arrow and this apple. And the second part of the problem is really a projectile motion problem as the apple and arrow travel from the top of the fence post to the ground. You see, really what we're gonna do here is look at this collision to find out the velocity of the apple and arrow just after this collision, which we're then gonna use as the initial velocity of the apple and the arrow as they travel in projectile motion down to the ground here. So looking at the first phase of this problem, what we really have is a completely inelastic collision. That is a collision where two objects stick together. Now in any collision, we can say that the initial momentum of the system in this case, that's the arrow and the apple, is equal to the final momentum of the system. Again, the arrow and the apple. Now, momentum is given by the equation mv, mass times velocity. And because we're dealing with two different objects here, the arrow and the apple, we're actually gonna have two initial momenta. One for the arrow, that's 100 grams, or really 0.1 kilograms, traveling along at 30 meters per second. And the other term is our momentum of our stationary apple, that's 200 grams, or what would show is 0.2 kilograms, and that's at rest, so we're gonna show it as having a velocity of zero. Now, after the collision, both of these objects are gonna be moving at some final velocity, and it's important to recognize that the two objects are gonna be moving together, therefore, they're gonna have this same velocity. So we can combine our two terms over here for velocity, leaving us with this. And solving for the final velocity, we get that just after the collision, the apple and the arrow are moving at 10 meters per second horizontally. Now, typically I find people struggle the most in this problem in understanding how a result over here for the first phase of this motion feeds into the second phase of motion or the projectile motion part of this problem. Now, the best way I find to structure projectile motion is to set up a table showing all the kinematic variables within each axis. So in the x-axis, we have displacement, initial and final velocity, as well as acceleration and time. And we have the same five variables in the y-axis. And all we're gonna do here is take everything we know so far and try to fill out as much of this table as possible before working into any calculations over here to solve for this horizontal displacement. You see, ultimately in the x-axis, we're trying to solve for the horizontal displacement of the arrow. That is d in the x-axis. Now moving on to the velocity, this is where people tend to get confused. This velocity that we solve for over here, this was the horizontal velocity of the arrow and apple just after the collision. So that is gonna be our horizontal velocity, that's 10 meters per second. Now anytime we're dealing with projectile motion on Earth, in the absence of air resistance, the acceleration is gonna be zero. Now given what we know in the x-axis, we don't know how long it's gonna take the apple and arrow to hit the ground. But by looking at the y-axis, we're gonna be able to figure that out. You see, in the y-axis, we know that the apple and the arrow are gonna travel downward one and a half meters. That is the height of the fence post. So I'm gonna say that's a negative 1.5 meters. I'm saying it's negative because they're moving downward and I'm just sticking with the convention. The up is the positive direction. Now this is where I see the mistake get made right here the velocity in the y-axis. I know it's tempting to say that the velocity in the y-axis is 10 meters per second, but remember, just after this collision, the apple and the arrow were moving horizontally at 10 meters per second, not vertically. So our initial vertical velocity is in fact gonna be zero. We don't know the final velocity, but the acceleration in the y-axis is gonna be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. Now the key to projectile motion is that anytime we know any three of these variables in either of these axes, we can solve for the other two. And the important idea being that two axes only share time. So if we can figure out time in the y-axis, then we'll have enough information in the x-axis to solve for the horizontal displacement. 
So using the kinematic equation, d is vit plus one half at squared in the y-axis, plugging in negative 1.5 for the displacement, zero for the initial time, and negative 9.8 for the acceleration, we find the total time it's gonna take this apple and arrow to strike the ground is gonna be 0.55 seconds. So now, knowing our objects are traveling horizontally for 0.55 seconds, we can again turn to the displacement equation and apply our numbers from the x-axis to that equation. So plugging in the velocity is 10 and the horizontal acceleration is zero, we solve for the displacement in the x-axis is 5.5 meters. So I hope you found this useful and that's all for now.